Hey everyone! Have you ever wanted to go through way too much effort to load an image into Unreal? Well, with PCG, now you can. Let me turn the light on and show you what I've done here. I'm using a texture sampler node to load this data in, and if I clean this up and regenerate, I can show you what it's doing. So what I've done is created cylinders with a color on one side and blackness on the other, and basically I've created pixels. I rotate each cylinder based on the color channel in the image I'm sampling. And there you go, you've got an image. All right, let me show you how to do it. I'm here in a new open world map, and the first thing I'm going to do is create the pixels. So I'm going to bring up the modeling tool which I can use via Shift-5 or by selecting it from this drop-down, Modeling. And I'm going to create a cylinder. So I'm going to want three cylinders for every square pixel, which means the cylinders need to be three times as tall as they are wide. So I like the height 120. It's just a number divisible by three that seems to work well for me which means that the width of each of them needs to be 40, so the radius needs to be half that, 20. And now let me place that and rotate it 90 degrees so it's on its side because I'm going to start with these pixels all on their side. And I'm going to set the pivot location to center just to make it a little easier for me. And now if I go look at this, let me turn off. There we go. And if you look at the rotation, it's still set to 90 here, so I'm going to need to bake this rotation in so that 0 is this rotation. So for that, I can scroll down to Transform and click on the Bake RS tool, Bake Rotation and Scale. And now if you look, rotation is 0. So this is going to be my pixel. I'm just going to go to it in the Content Browser by clicking this search icon here. And now I've got it up in the content browser right here, so I'm going to drag it on into my tutorial folder and move it. And I'm just going to rename it Pixel. And I can close that. Next, I need to create the texture for the pixel so that one side is lit and the other side is not lit. And for that, I am going to go to the Matte Ed tool. So for this tool, I need to add an active material. I'm just going to hit plus here. And there are two materials now. I'm going to keep the first material as the color and set the second material to the dark background. So now I can paint using this tool halfway up. and on down to halfway down the other side. And now let me just uh, make a note on either side so I can tell at a glance which way this is facing. Now I'll save this work. First change the active material to 1. Assign active material and now the top material is going to be 1, and the bottom material is going to be 0. And just click Accept now. Now I need to create my materials. So I'm going to just uh, right-click and create a material. I'm going to call this M underscore pixels, and open it up. And this is going to be very simple. I'm going to create a base color, metallic, roughness, and just for fun, an emissive color. So I'm just going to hold down 4 and left click for the base color and emissive color, which creates a vector 4, which is usable for red, green, blue, and alpha. I'll right click on the first one, convert it to a parameter, and call it base color. So I'll right click on the second one, convert to a parameter, and call it emissive color. And I'm just going to leave these as black as the default, which will let me use just the default values for the black underside. Now I'll hold 1 for metallic and roughness. Convert them to parameters as well. 
I'm not going to change these values after I set their defaults, but it's just useful to have them as options. Roughness I'm going to set to 1 so it's not shiny, and I'll leave metallic at 0. And that is the basic material. I'll save that. And now I'll close this modeling mode because I don't need it anymore. I can hit Shift 1 or just go to the drop down and selection. Now I'm going to right click on the material and create a material instance. I'm going to call this mi underscore pixel black. And I don't need to do anything with this one because it's already set to black. So let me duplicate this mi underscore pixel red. And I'll do the same thing for blue and green. Now I can highlight all of these and open them up. And for these, I'm just going to change the base color. So this one I'm just going to make entirely red. Save close. This one will be entirely green. And the last one will be entirely blue. Let me rename this to sm underscore pixel to denote that it's a static mesh. There we go. So now let me open this, and now you see two elements. I'm going to assign the first one to be the red color. There we go. I'm going to start these off oriented so that they are entirely turned off, and then as they get higher color values, they'll flip around and become that color. I'm going to call this one colors, and this one black. If you are setting this up and you find that in the world your cylinder is entirely the same color, try opening the static mesh and making sure that the slot names have different names. Next, I'm going to enable Nanite support and apply changes. And there we have our pixel. I can rotate it, and it is on. Rotate it back, and it's off. So now that we have the pixels, I can work on the PCG graph. I'll do that right here. Create a PCG graph, PCG underscore pixels. And I can open that up, and I will start with a get texture data node. Now, the texel size is going to be how far apart each pixel or each point is. So, since I have set my cylinder to be 120 high, I'm going to set the texel size to 120 to start. Now I can import the texture. I'm just going to drag and drop it from my Explorer window over into here. And I can select T-Rex Tutorial in here. Now I can drag it out in the world and we will see the results. And so you may get this error that's saying it's an unsupported texture format. Well, the way to solve this is to go into the texture itself, just double click it open, and change the compression settings from default over to either vector displacement map or user interface 2D. I find both of them work. I've just been using vector displacement map, so that's what I'm gonna keep using. Save that. And now you're gonna to have to unselect your texture and reselect it and that has resolved the error. So if I debug this, I've got my texture data. Now, I'm only seeing white pixels, white squares, because I'm on the alpha channel and the image I imported is a JPEG, which I just took on a camera, it has no alpha channel. So if I change it to, let's say, red, there we go. We've got our 
very pixelated T-Rex. Let's fix that. I can just make it bigger, and it gets higher resolution because we are still sampling every 120 units. So the bigger it is, the higher resolution it gets. I'll just keep it down to something uh, that I can easily work with without taking too much time recalculating every edit I make. So what I'm going to need to do is sample each different color channel and output them to a different colored pixel cylinder. Now, a trick when you have no alpha channel, so alpha is on for everything, and let me just inspect that and show you what's happening here. So these color values are coming into the color R, color G, color B, and color A, so R, G, B, alpha channels. And when alpha is fully on for everything, color alpha is 1 for everything. And if I select a different channel, you see the points go from 6889 down to 6686. So it is excluding the point when you filter it down to a channel if that point has zero intensity in that color. So by using the alpha channel in this case, I can simply sample everything. If you have an alpha channel, then you'll need to have a separate get texture data node for each different channel, so RGB and one more for alpha if you want it. But I have the shortcut since alpha is one for everything and it gives me all the points, I can simply get the texture data once and then filter on the various colors. So let me just start with a static mesh spawner. I'll show you what we got here. And let me turn debug off. And the static mesh, I'm going to add the mesh entry for the pixel. And there we go. We have a bunch of pixels, and they are lined up very cleanly with each other. They're all black right now, as expected, because they are all entirely turned off. And there is the space for two pixels between every one of these, which will give us our red, green, and blue pixels. So let's do that now. I'll add a transform point node. The red I'm going to move to the left, the green will be in the center, and the blue will be to the right. So the red, negative 40, negative 40. I'll just copy all of this for the green, and for the blue. Green will be at 0, 0, and blue, 40, 40. Let me just hook these up. And I will update these meshes, except I'm going to use the same static mesh. I'm just going to set an override material for each of them. So this will be pixel green, and this will be pixel blue. And the way I set it up is that the element 0 is the one that I didn't edit, so it's on the bottom, which is the color part. If you did it the other order, that's fine. You can simply add another override element and set the second override element and leave the first one as none, and it will not be affected. But here we go. I've got my red, green, and blue pixels. Now I need to rotate them. To do that, I'm going to add a rotator field to all of these pixels, and then I will multiply the rotator by the intensity of the color, and that will simply flip them around 180 degrees based on uh, how much they are from 0 to 1. If they're fully on, it's 1, and so they flip around 180 degrees and are fully visible. So I'm going to use an add attribute. And let me do one other thing. I need to double check which axis I'm rotating this thing along. So if I hit E to enable rotation, I am rotating on the second axis, which is the pitch axis. So let me go back, and I will add that to the rotator. Rotator. I'm going to call it pixel intensity, and the rotator value is going to be 0, 180, 0. Let me plug that in. 
break these connections, and add it in here. And so if I inspect this, you won't see anything because rotator attributes don't show up on this inspector. But uh, trust me, it is there. So now I'm going to add a maths operation node after these transform points nodes. And let me just hook this on up. And I'm going to make it a multiply node. Multiply. And I'm going to multiply pixel intensity by color.r and output it to rotation. And that's giving me an error. It says pixel intensity is not a supported type for input 0. So instead of setting pixel intensity uh, rotator, I need to set pixel intensity dot pitch, uh, the individual property within the rotator. And I'm going to output that to rotation dot pitch. And as you can see, that's cleared up the error. So now if I look at this, we've got a red channel. Let's do the same thing for green and blue. And I need to update these so that they are color.g and color.b. Perfect. I've got my image. Yeah, that's a pretty good likeness, right? But uh, there's one problem. If I rotate this, the pixels don't rotate with the volume. So I need to add this rotation in. So let me show you how to do that. First off, the rotation isn't present in the base pixel data. So I need to figure out what this rotation is. I can do that with a get actor data node. I'm going to set the actor filter self mode to get single point. And now if I inspect this, I see rotation x40. That's perfect. Now I need to add this rotation into this data. I can do that with a rotator op. I'm just going to drag the actor data into here and the texture data into here as well. Input source 1 is going to be rotation. And I'm using a combine operation. Input source 2 is rotation, and output source is rotation. This is just going to combine the two rotators and give me the result of both. And now I have this error. Rotation does not exist for input 0. Well, the data that's being sent out of here doesn't include data that the maths op node can read. So I'm just going to send it through a two-point node. Hook that up and hook it up here, and that's solved the error. Now it's happy. So let me just hook all of this back up again and take a look. And that uh, has not solved things. The purely black ones are working fine, but as rotation gets added, it's going in the wrong direction. What I need to do is a little workaround. Instead of simply applying this rotation here, what I need to do is combine the rotation with this earlier rotation. So let me do that. Input source one, pixel intensity dot pitch, output target, pixel intensity dot pitch. So now I have pixel intensity as the rotation that the pixel needs to turn on. So I'll use another rotator op here and combine pixel intensity with rotation. Input source 1, let's do rotation. Input source 2, pixel intensity. And output target, rotation. And that still hasn't worked. So what I need to do is, instead of simply combining the rotator, I'm going to need to invert rotation, combine them, and then invert it again. And that will actually give me a local rotation from pixel intensity. I'm going to create another rotator op node, and I'm going to change it to invert. Input source 1 is going to be rotation, and output target will be rotation. I'll hook that up here. 
and I will put the same thing on the other side. So I'm inverting rotation, then I'm combining the two, and then I'm inverting it all back. And now, oh, that red channel's looking pretty good. I just have to do the same for green and blue, which just means copying this. I can break these, pasting it in here, and pasting it again, and just hooking these things up. And I still need to modify these to no longer set pixel intensity to rotation. So let me do that now. And let's see what's happening. We've got an angry T-Rex. That's just perfect. And if you see things are a little confusingly off sometimes after expanding, just uh, go into the graph, clear and regenerate. And there we go. We got our pixel data. The pixels are all flat and neatly lined up. And it's looking good. Let me add one more thing to this, though. With the light off, you don't see anything. Well, we can fix that. I'm just going to go into all of this material instance data and add an emissive color. Point 0.25. No need to go too far on it. And the blue, 0.25. And there we go. Our own light up image. And if you look at it from the other side, it's actually the negative of the image, which is pretty fun. OK, well, there's your tutorial on this thing. I have no idea what you might use it for. If you figure out anything practical, let me know. Enjoy.